Many people, especially in the United States, were leading to believe that the Africans who were stolen and captured in Western Central Africa had no history, were uncivilized, uneducated, and things like that. But the life of Omar and Ben Said would dispel all of those myths. Born around the year 1770 in Futatoro in modern-day Senegal, Omar Ben Said lost his father at only five years old. He was heavily educated in Africa, most importantly on Islam and the language of Arabic, but he also was trained in things like business, theology, and arithmetic. He was trained under his own brother, Sheikh Mohammed Said, as well as two others, and after 25 years of training under his belt, he became an educator himself. Unfortunately, after almost 40 years of regular life in West Africa as a normal human, he was captured and taken into slavery. Like many others, after he was captured in Senegal, he was taken to Charleston, South Carolina. The Charleston port is where over half of the enslaved Africans who came to this country came in through. And this is in 1807, the last year that you could legally bring Africans into the United States. But we know that they was bringing us in up into the 1860s. He was first bought by a man named Johnson, who he described as a complete infidel who had no fear of God at all. It just wasn't working for him at all. He actually escaped and made it all the way to Fayetteville, North Carolina. Once he got to Fayetteville, he took shelter in a church and started praying. That's where he was found and taken to jail for 16 days as a runaway. Mind you, he didn't even know where the jail was. There was no need or no such concept as a jail in West Africa at the time of his life. While he was in the jail, he started writing on the walls in Arabic, and he just blew all the white folks' mind. They were just... They didn't know what was going on because they had already beat that out of everybody else. Mr. Saeed ended up as the property of James Owen, a senator from North Carolina, and this is his brother, John Owen, former governor of North Carolina. Now, Mr. Saeed said they treated him good and everything like a regular human being, but at the end of the day, they still owned him, and if they really wanted to treat him well, they would have let him free. Today, Mr. Saeed is known as leaving behind 14 different written documents that you can find in the Library of Congress, and one of them being the only Arabic autobiography written by an enslaved African in the United States. But back then, he was known by something completely different and something that might not have even been true. When the Owens family bought Mr. Saeed, they bought him a Bible in Arabic as well as a Quran in the English language. And they say around 1820, 1821, he actually converted to Christianity. Of course, they did what they do in the newspapers, and they pretty much spun it as their own accomplishment by converting this Muslim man from West Africa to a Christian. They even kind of alluded that the fact that because he could read and write, he must have been a prince or something, because I know everybody couldn't read and write back in Africa. They couldn't have. While they was bragging about converting him to Christianity and how he even had his own spot in the church and everything else, throughout his writings, he maintained his Muslim identity pretty much. Even though they swore he was such a devout Christian, he started off his autobiography by saying, In the name of God, the merciful, the gracious, God grant his blessing upon our prophet Muhammad. This is another one of the documents he left behind. You can see at the bottom that they thought this was the Lord's Prayer written in Arabic by Uncle Marod, what they call him, or Omar ibn Sa'id. But after translation, this is actually the 110th chapter from the Quran that he memorized in his head all the way back from Senegal. After being one of the last enslaved Africans to legally be brought into the United States in 1807, he transitioned in 1864, the year before slavery was legally ended in the United States. The life of Mr. Omar bin Said is a great example of the complexities and the confusion surrounding black life and culture in America and especially black Muslims. I know your school probably didn't teach you about the stories of black Muslims in America or black people, period. So go ahead and like this video, subscribe to me on YouTube and TikTok at the Community Teacher and Instagram at the Community Teacher. Peace. Thank you.